It's the Jurassic Park Command Compound. With an electronic computer that says over a hundred commands. Ben's Hill. Uh, we need more firepower. The computer help. helps you control Jurassic Park. Got him. T-Rex. Attach it. Watch out, Pat. Fire the net. Got him. Compound secure. Yeah. Jurassic Park electronic talking command compound figures and dinosaurs sold separately. Batteries. Hello, guys. I hope you're all doing well. Um... Today I wanted to make a different type of video uh, that I haven't really done yet, but I've wanted to do. And uh, yesterday I was presented with the perfect opportunity to make a video like this. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw that yesterday I found a holy grail Jurassic Park item at a flea market for super, super cheap. And that item was the Jurassic Park Command Compound. Found this guy at a flea market for only $15, which is incredible. Um, now, it is in pretty worse for wear condition and it's missing pretty much every piece on this. Um, and also, if you saw my collection video, you know that I already own a command compound. This is actually the third one that I've owned. The second one that I got, I sold um, because, you know, there's really no reason, I really don't like to collect doubles, um, but this guy was in such bad shape. I hated to see it just sit there. And so I decided that I would make a restoration project out of it. And then hopefully I can get it back out into the collecting community and maybe it'll help someone else complete or start to complete their command compound. So I'm gonna just, you know, document me restoring this. Um, I've actually restored my two other command compounds that I've owned um, because they were also in pretty worse for wear shape. And that includes, you know, just taking it apart washing it, examining it, um, buying new pieces. Now, I won't be buying any new pieces to complete this, so it's less of a restoration and more of just, you know, cleaning it up and, and getting it in better condition than it is. And you can see I haven't touched it since I bought it. It's got this bag here with some accessories. I'm not sure quite what's in that. So yeah, let's just uh, start by examining this. I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna start here um, with this bag. I'm just gonna take this bag off. It's sort of like strangely tied on here. I'm actually gonna cut it off. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna open up this bag and see, man, this thing is really like taped and tied up. All right, so I guess first off, here's a piece of the net launcher. And it seems to be in okay condition. However, um, it's broken. As you can see, it's uh, it's actually a th it's missing the little orange button down here that you press to release it. Um, and it's just sort of flopping around. So unfortunately, this piece is is pretty unusable. I may be able to find a home for it, but I'm unsure about that item. Right here is the Jurassic Park uh, sign that is a part of the gate. Um, now, this is also in pretty bad shape. I've seen worse. Usually these pegs are completely ripped off. Um, this one is pretty loose. Um, this one's completely broken off. It's missing one down there. This one's pretty loose. And then this is pretty unfortunate. This is a Series 1 Pteranodon, and its head is actually in pretty good shape. Usually the paint on these guys is pretty scuffed up, but this guy looks pretty good. Unfortunately, he is missing his wings. So, yeah, this could be, you know, used for parts, I guess. Um, it could be a cool, you know, people who like to do custom figures, you know, they might be able to use this. Uh, so we'll see about that. And then lastly in this bag, we have a T-Rex Turner. And he's, you know, he's pretty scuffed up. And I already have a T-Rex Turner figure. He's pretty loose. Uh, he's missing some paint. But overall, I mean, he's, he's okay. So you can immediately tell that this is not really looking that great. We have a, just assorted, just messed up parts here. So we're gonna sit these aside and let's actually examine the command compound itself. So here's the command compound and 
first thing I'm noticing is right up here, this piece is sort of warped in. And this is a really common problem that I see with a lot of these command compounds. Let me go ahead and, okay, so, all right, so that's an issue. So the seller has like taped the roof on and they've taped over the decals. So when I take this tape off, the chances are that the, the original decals are gonna be ripped off, which is pretty unfortunate. So here's, there's the roof. Here's the roof part off. Now I'm just gonna take this. Yeah, and as you can see there, that decal completely ripped off. This one seems okay, but that decal completely came off, um, which is pretty unfortunate. Okay, so that's all the tape removed. Um, and now let's kind of examine this, this part. So as you can see, let me zoom in here to the sort of interior of the playset. Um, it's pretty dark, but uh, there is a lot of grime in this playset. So you can see there's just a lot of dirt and grime in this playset. Um, there's some decal residue back there from where decals used to be. It's missing all of the pieces that would go here. Um, but the one part that is that scares me but is also a little promising is the computer system is still in here now. It doesn't work, it, so chances are, and I've seen with a lot of these, is that the chances are that this is actually probably corroded pretty bad because um, people just leave the batteries in and then they just, you know, store them and the batteries just get corroded in there. So we'll take a look at that. But yeah, I mean, the dirt and the grime on this is, is pretty severe. So it's gonna really take a good washing. And now another part that I'm noticing that is gonna be pretty unfixable is let me zoom in back here. You can see right here, there's a little bit of like melting that has happened. Uh, and this is a problem that I see sometimes, you know, battery acid or other things can corrode the plastic. You know, it could just be heat. Um, and it sort of melted this plastic. And it's also sort of up here. I don't know if you can see that. It's sort of up here in the fossil uh, detail right here. There's another part where it's sort of melted. So I think the first step is gonna be disassembly. And then I'm gonna just soak this in a bath and give it a nice wash. Um, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna examine um, the computer part and see if that's gonna be um, anything that we can use. Okay, so I've moved down here to the floor, so hopefully you can see me sort of try to take this apart. And so I think I'm gonna start with taking out the computer. So I'm gonna remove, see that you have this gun here, and it sort of runs along to the computer. Um, the gun's actually in pretty nice shape, which is good. And so is this cable. Usually this cable, this rubber wire can, can sometimes not be so great. Uh, and then so basically there's these little pegs here that are holding it into the bottom of the base plate here. And you're just gonna wanna carefully pinch those and just wedge it out. And there it goes. Now, actually that's pretty pleasing to see the, the uh, the screw here at the bottom isn't rusty at all. It's super clean. So that's a good sign. Um, now this is pretty dirty and some of the decals aren't exactly placed very well, but honestly, I may just keep it like that. We'll set that aside. So the way that this is built um, is there's just tons of these little pegs that are holding everything in. And rather than risk breaking it, trying to get all these little pegs out, I think I'm just gonna wash it as is. Um, there aren't any screws, so those won't, you know, we won't risk getting those um, rusty or anything. Um, the only decals on here are these two up top here. So I'm not really gonna concern myself with that either. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this in the wash and I'm just gonna try to clean it as best as I can with a toothbrush. And then there are some places where there's some paint rub, so I may use my baking soda mixture that I talked about in my last video, or one of my last videos um, about removing paint scratches from old toys using baking soda. So I might use that method for that. Um, so let's just go to the bathtub and let's put this guy to wash. 
Okay, so I have ran um, a bathtub of water and I put just a little bit of um, Dawn dishwashing liquid in there just to, you know, sort of get it already soapy. Uh, and I may have put too much because there is a boatload of soap over here. Um, but, uh, so yeah, we're just gonna go ahead. I actually already put in, as you can see, I put in the top here to start, a, so, to start sort of soaking. And um, now this is like lukewarm water. You don't wanna get the water too hot because you could risk, you know, sort of warping the plastic further. Um, just keep in mind that these toys are, you know, 30 years old. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna submerge this in my water and just sort of let it soak. And so I have my soap, I've got my toothbrush, and I've got a magic eraser to hopefully try to get some of those marks off. Let's start here with the top. Um, now, the, the, the roof is actually in pretty good condition. It's actually probably in, in the best condition of, of this entire set. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go over this with the toothbrush, see if there's any dirt or debris. And I'm just going to kind of clean it up. All right, so now I want to focus my attention onto the problem area itself, the actual playset. I'm just going to go in here with my toothbrush uh, in these really detailed crevices, and I'm just going to start scrubbing and hopefully take a lot of this old dirt and grime off. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go in with my magic eraser and I'm gonna look for any problem areas where there are um, standout like paint scruffs. Um, and there is one actually right here. I don't know if you can really, it's kind of hard to see. There is that red spot right there inside here. So I'm just gonna take my magic eraser. I'm gonna go in, I'm just gonna scrub and then boom, instantly it's gone. Um, so, if you have a harder plastic, you know, larger surface area playset like this, uh, a magic eraser will do wonders at removing um, scuff marks. Okay, I just finished scrubbing this guy really good and it's looking fantastic. Uh, so I'm just gonna let all this water drain out and I'm just gonna put these guys on a towel to dry and I'm gonna now focus my attention on the computer part. Okay, so now I wanna focus my attention onto the computer. And first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up and examine the battery box because most times um, that thing is completely corroded. So I'm just gonna get my screwdriver. Okay, and moment of truth. Oh, never mind. Now moment of truth. Wow. And that's exactly uh, what I expected. That is not good at all. It is completely corroded in there. Yeah, so this is not gonna work. Obviously, right? Uh, and I honestly believe that this is probably um, past the point of no return. Because it's just that corroded. This is one of the worst examples that I've actually ever seen. But as Yoda said, Try not. Do. Or do not. There is no try. Okay, so here we are in my kitchen. And after doing a little bit of research, I found that the best way to attempt to remove um, this battery corrosion is to use baking soda and vinegar to sort of neutralize the battery acid and then just kind of scrub it away. Um, now this is so bad that I know I'm not gonna be able to fix it, but um, maybe at least I'll sort of help it a little bit. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it in here on those contacts. Okay, now we're gonna use a Q-tip to add some vinegar in here. Now what this is gonna do is gonna sort of start a chemical reaction. I'm just gonna take my vinegar and we're just gonna go in here and sort of dab it like that. 
and it is fizzing up, which is interesting. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is fizzing quite a bit. And you can see it's turning the Q-tip blue, uh, which is very interesting. So you can see that we're getting a little bit off, but um, this process is simply not going to go very well, I don't believe. Now, if I knew anything about electronics and soldering and stuff, I could just disassemble this thing, take these contacts out, and uh, try to fix them, and really clean them up. But I have no idea how to do any of that stuff. Okay, so I've taken the bottom out of this, um, out of the computer, and you can just see how corroded those uh, connectors are. And um, this is all out of my comfort zone. Um, so I'm not gonna even attempt to sort of restore this. Um, but now you know what the inside of a Jurassic Park Command Compound computer system looks like, so that's cool. But there is still quite a bit of dirt and grime on this guy, so I am going to uh, get rid of some of that. And of course, since it's electronic, even though the electronics are completely shot, um, I don't wanna submerge it in water. So I'm just gonna take a, you know, a wet uh, rag and I'm just gonna kinda scrub it um, instead of submerging it like I did the rest of the playset. These uh, decals are actually in good shape, so um, I'm not gonna worry about replacing the decals. However, if you do want replacement decals, there is a great um, seller on eBay, I'll put the link in the description, um, that uh, specializes in uh, repro stickers. Um, now some people, I know this is with the Star Wars community more of an issue, some people are big sticklers about um, reproduction items, um, like reproduction decals. Um, I'm not, most of the uh, items I own are actually um, done up with repro stickers. Um, just because it's impossible to find old stickers and um, I really don't see an issue with it. But yeah, so if you're looking for some repro stickers, I will leave the link to that guy in the, in the, uh, in the description. I've used his stickers for my, um, both my command compounds, my uh, mobile command center, and all that stuff. So great seller. I highly recommend him. Okay, guys, so it's been a couple hours and pretty much dry. I'm very happy with uh, how this cleaned up. I mean, it is leagues better than it was before as far as the dirt and grime. Um, so there's only a couple things left to do. One of them is to remove this sticker residue um, that's left back here. And so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a product called Goo Gone which just uh, basically just removes old gunk. And hopefully that'll loosen that up and allow me to, to get that out of there. So let's try that. It, now this stuff is pretty like, it leaves a lot of like grease behind sort of. So you wanna make sure that you're spraying very liberally. It doesn't take a lot. Um, and just get in that part. I'm gonna just let that sit for a little bit and kind of get under all that residue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add back in our computer system here, which actually cleaned up pretty nicely. We're gonna go ahead and just slot this guy back in. Make sure to line it up properly. And it lines right up. And then we're just gonna run this back to the post. And I'm going to add the roof back on. And boom, awesome just like that. And you can just see that it, it just cleaned up really, really nicely. Honestly, I am a little disappointed. I wasn't able to get it all fixed up. I'm pretty disappointed all these pieces are pretty much unusable. Um, and it's not exactly, it's in actually worse condition than I had originally thought, which is always, you know, not very good. But I am happy that I was able to clean it up and hopefully someone will be able to get some use out of it. So hopefully somebody needs these parts and you know maybe they can do something with it. And that's what I wanna do. I wanna put it back in the collecting community, get it back out there so somebody can enjoy it. Um, so, 
So guys, I guess that ends this video. I really appreciate you guys sticking around and watching me clean up this uh, command compound. I had a great time. And yeah, uh, stay tuned for more videos. I hope to make more videos like this. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.